glad everybody could come. This is great. Uh, you know, I've asked people to give me suggestions for the open studio visits. You know, I'm planning on doing some of my own painting and then some of, um, you know, when people send me suggestions, you know, I'll hit upon that. And one that recently uh, came across uh, the, uh, you know, my interest was uh, how to use soft and hard pastels. And we mm -hmm. talk a lot about, you know, the hardness of a pastel and um, the differences between the two. But, you know, I thought it was a good time to just do a little bit refresher for some people and information for other people on actually how do you go about using, when do you use a hard pastel? When do you use a soft pastel? You know, which order you can use them in. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that. So uh, before I get started, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so if everyone could just mute themselves and then, as you know, if you've been in the open studios before, you know, unmute yourself, ask a question, and then mute yourself again. And part of that is the noises that are coming in the background, you know, can interfere with people hearing what's going on. Okay. All right. So for a start, if you go on to the Dakota website, they have Dakota Art Supply. Let me clarify that. They specialize in pastel supplies. So, you know, truthfully, they have a huge selection of both uh, surfaces, papers, boards, and also different types of pastels, and then different material, um, you know, uh, supplies that you could use with uh, pastels, uh, tools, things like that. So uh, books, get on and have a look. But what they also have is they have a, a, a poster, well, a printout, it's, you know, flyer size, that actually shows you some of the top brands and identifies their level of softness or hardness. Now, when we mm. talk about soft pastels, a lot of pa pastels call themselves soft and they are a soft pastel. They're not an oil pastel. They are a soft pastel, which means the particles are loose to varying degrees. So what happens with this is it lays out your more firm or harder pastels, which new pastels a lot of people have because you can actually buy them, um, you know, in just your regular arts and crafts supply store, like an AC Moore or AC Moore even around anymore, Michaels, that <laughs> sort of thing. So, the, um, and then there's some other ones in there. I haven't used all of these in here. I have used the Karen, uh, Karen, gosh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that correctly. Um, I find it a little bit uh, waxy, so I'm not actually crazy about it, but that could be um, the more you use it, the less <laughs> waxy the outer edge feels. But the new pastel is the hardest one that I use. So when I talk about hard pastels, I'm talking about a uh, new pastel and mm -hmm. uh, I'll show them to you. Then it goes into what they consider their medium uh, firmness of pastels. And in there is Rembrandt. And that's another pastel that it's been around forever. Great colors. It's a, a good old reliable staple to have in your pastel box. Uh, it's not going to break the bank. It's not super expensive. It's the same with new pastel. Um, so again, you can get that quite easily, even like in yard sales, you know, art sales, that sort of thing, when people are getting rid of their supplies almost always see a Rembrandt floating around in there someplace. Mm -hmm. um, I often refer to them as hard because what happens is, is as soon as you start using the softer pastels, it actually really acts and reacts more like uh, the new pastel. And I'll explain a little bit about that. So um, there's a huge selection of uh, your very soft pastel. And what's nice is they've ranked them according to their, their softness. So it's well worth getting on, um, print off um, the, uh, the information sheet that they have there so that you've got it in your studio. It's helpful if you're trying to figure out uh, your, um, you know, filling in pastels in your box and which kind you want and what have you not tried before. Ask other people too. Uh, everyone's got their favorites though. <laughs> Although I have multiple favorites, I never have just one. So anyway, that was my first bit of advice from Dakota Art Supply. 
Now I was lucky enough, I brought this down to where I teach and they blew it up to a poster size. So there's one in the classroom and then you know, I have one for myself here and it's really handy. So most of you um, with your pastels, you probably have quite a, a, you know, an assortment. Some of you maybe a smaller assortment, others uh, wider. And um, my biggest suggestion is, is to try different types of pastels different browns because they all have their uniqueness and based on the style that you have and how you apply pastel and how you use pastel, you will find your own preferences. And I mentioned before in past uh, open studios that you can get uh, what's called half stick sets. And there are several brands out there that do that. It's really nice because for the same amount of money as a full box, uh, not a full box, but a full stick size, a box of 60, for, uh, for instance, you would get half sticks and you'd get 120 colors. So it's, it's really a nice way to fill in if you're starting and you're looking to get more um, variety in your palette. Okay. Mm. So um, I'm going to be, for the demo purposes, using uh, Cants on My Tins, and this is their uh, moonstone color. I like it. It's a warm uh, middle value uh, gray. And what's really nice about it is the um, you can see the lights on it, you can see the middles and you can see, well, it depends on where the middles fall and your uh, dark pastels. And it's um, a really good quality paper. Um, I don't use it for a lot of my painting because I do put multiple layers and I use a um, mostly soft pastels. So what happens is, is with this paper, there's minimal tooth to it. So it really is um, more suited, my style, it's more suited, suited for um, using more hard pastels. Now, someone who's used it a lot may have wonderful suggestions for how you can get on multiple layers of very soft pastel. And that might include using a spray fixatives uh, or other things, uh, a light touch, I would imagine, because again, there's not a lot of tooth to this paper. So it's a great practice paper to have uh, mm. on hand. Okay. So I, let's, yes. I, think I have a question already. Yeah. Um, that paper without so much tooth is more suited for hard pastels because. Good question. Why? <laughs> Because hard pastels leaves less uh, pigment or, or pastel particles behind, so that in order to uh, fill the tooth with a hard pastel, it would take more pressure, more layers. So you're able to actually, and I'm going to show you that. That was one of the things. I, I see. Okay. So, Thanks. Yeah, it is, it is on my agenda to show you. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to jump in right now. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a variety of sticks here. So let's, okay, so this is a, a dark, a dark blue, okay? So heavy pressure, you know, I'm gonna move in. You guys don't need to see me anymore. And it'd be nicer if you had a close up here. So let me. So you're just... starting with a new pastel, Betsy? Yeah, I'm just pulling up a new pastel now just to show you, I'm gonna get this pretty close and I can move this around to show. Okay, so I am pressing very hard here, okay? Now, two things I can tell why I'm not lose, using up a lot of, um, leaving a lot of particles behind is I'm not seeing filtering of dust, okay? So this, this here, this is full, firm, hard, okay? I lessen mm -hmm. the pressure, and it just gets lighter. A couple reasons it gets lighter. One, it gets lighter because it's less pressure. Two, as there's less pressure, you can see the color of the paper. So that really will affect it. If I was using dark paper, it would be totally different. So you wanna bear in mind what kind of paper you're actually using. So with this hard pastel, still not seeing any dust. That's, that's great. It's not leaving pigment loose particles behind. And that is one of the things where starting with the hard pastel um, means that you can get on a lot of uh, a lot of pastel very firmly, and even this paper that doesn't have a lot of tooth still not getting particles. 
Now, if I, oops, I forgot to put a glove on. Let me put this one on right here. If I was to actually take, and I reuse my gloves, so this one's pretty grimy. So I'm just going to take, and I can just press that in if I wanted to. You know, there's some that's coming off on my hand. So yeah, there is some level of looseness to it, but not enough where it's falling off. And I'm going to take another pastel that's pretty soft. This is a Diane Townsend, and this is a very soft pastel. So let's see how it, oops, I'm already seeing dust fall. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not even pressing hard. And the pastel is falling. So think of it. You can get more layers of a hard pastel because the particles are not going to um, uh, fall off as easily. They're not going to fill in the tooth as easily. Um, the looseness of the pastel does not affect your layering. Okay. So this soft, I'm just going to put it on lightly. It's just, it's really just falling off the, I don't know if you guys can see it there. And now you can tell us I have a little pile starting down below. <laughs> there's a there's a trough underneath here. So I'm just gonna, okay, now I'm gonna press really hard with that. Okay, I'm not gonna do any more because I can just see a whole load of pastel that's there. And this is gonna spread a lot easier because these particles are very loose, okay? These, if you think of it as loose and uh, hard, these here, I can get some level. Okay, I'm pressing really hard here. I can get some level of blending, but not as much because these are, this is more compact. So there's basically the biggest difference is that there's more binding agent in this stick that combines uh, with the pure pigment and it creates a harder, which is where they get the word harder, a harder stick, which means that we have less pastel that comes off. This one here, it is less binding agent. So it's, look at just holding it in my hand. It's just coming off on my hand. Now I ch did choose Diane Townsend. This is a very soft one. So this one here, just by touching it, the pastel particles are coming off. So you have to imagine that on your paper in your surface and what you want to do. If I put this on my, this, especially this paper first, and I start using it, what happens is it's the same one. Oh, there's a different one. Did I pick up a different one? That would not be unlike me. <laughs> mm. It's still a Diane Townsend. That was me rubbing. It changed its color <laughs> when I pushed it in. It's probably because I have dirty gloves. So if you can imagine starting a pastel on this paper with little tooth with this pastel that is very soft, it's going to, you're going to wind up with a lot of dust, a lot of mm. particles flying around, and um, it's going to be much harder to layer because this is going to fill <clears throat> that tooth in quite quickly. And through that all, Marge, did I answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay, because, Thanks. you know, once I started talking, it was like, God, I hope I'm on the right track for whatever question <laughs> you actually ask me. <laughs> so, okay, so paper with little tooth, the harder pastels, you can do more with it. So let's say now I want to add, um, let's, I'm going to make these just slightly bigger. And this was my example of a very super soft one. So now I'm going to take one that's not really quite so soft. And this is a Mount Vision. I love Mount Vision. Okay, oh. pressing super hard. I can still see the paper through there. I'm not having that much particles come off, but I know that if, because this is a very soft pastel, um, if I press too much, I am going to wind up with particles. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to let some of that paper show through, but I'm going to use the side of my finger. I think I've showed you that before. If you use the side of your finger, you're less likely to fiddle around and noodle your painting. Let's get a bigger one right here and let's get this guy big. Okay, so we have a block of hard pastel and a block of uh, soft pastel.
Uh, Betsy, I have a question. Yes. Um, I know at the beginning what paper you said you you're using right now. Oh, I'm using Kant's and Mike Tien's. It's um, it's a, a common paper that you can buy most places. Hang on, just a second. Okay. Let me get the. I, I'm familiar with it. Okay, good, good. Okay. Yeah, because the no, um. My second question is. Um, I'm wondering if it would be possible to focus your camera with a fixed focus on your paper instead of varying the focus because when you put your hand over, it blurs. Uh, because oh, it does. Okay, okay. Sorry, Leah. Let let me get in there and let me fix that. Let me just go like that. Move like that. Okay. Yeah, I had it on autofocus, so let's put that on fixed focus and see if that's, is that any better? Um, yes. Okay, okay, yeah, I took off autofocus. Yeah. Okay, so what I've done, oh, did you have another question? Sorry. No. Just that? Okay, so what I have here, is you can see, I have to work a lot harder to fill this in. This is even a darker color. I'm using all different uh, marks at this moment. I'm, so I'm just coming in very linear, linearly so that I wind up having very dark area going to a lighter area just by moving that apart. So I have a hard pastel here and I have soft pastel here. Now, when you go to use your sticks, if I'm doing hard pastel down first, Okay, I can use other sticks of hard pastel over it and I can come in and I can press hard and I can cover right over that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that it goes totally solid. I can come in and I can use cross hatching and that's going to vary whether it's on the dark or the light. Okay, go back and forth. I can do it randomly so that it's a little bit more natural looking. Okay, start to lose it over here because over here is getting lighter. So the ability to be able to see the marks begins to fade. Okay, and that's a value thing. So even though there's a dark pastel there, there's a lot of paper showing through. So I can take and I can actually create a variety of textural marks just by taking this a uh, lighter shade of blue and dragging, uh, making marks over the dark blue and then where it turns a little bit lighter. This works out really well with uh, this kind of paper. Now mm -hmm. I'm gonna take and put in a different color here so you can see it. I'm gonna take something that is a little bit more on the analogous range. So I'm gonna take a green so you can see that. And I'm gonna see how much I can fill this in. Again, a lot of pressure. A lot of what you do with pastels depends on what kind of pressure you use. So I'm using a lot mm -hmm. of pressure here and I can pretty much cover up the colors that were underneath. Let's see how that works with the, just the blue. Same thing, I can cover that up. A little bit of that lighter color underneath goes through here. So the green looks a little bit lighter because what's happened is some of that pigment mix, mixes with this when I'm, but it's like a natural blend when you layer. Same thing happens when I start putting more marks in here. I'm gonna just do my cross hatching again. I can change it around. Mm -hmm. Certainly I can get lots of layers on this. I still am not collecting dust. Okay, mm. and I would suggest to any of you that you work upright because as soon as you start seeing dust fall or dust around, it means that uh, you need to knock that off. You don't, you don't want to blow on it. You want to walk over to the trash can and you want to just knock that off so it goes in the trash can. Mm. You don't want that. Uh, this was lying flat. I still wouldn't have any particles that were loose. Again, the difference here is I, I can go from uh, very firm strokes to very uh, soft strokes. And the paper, even this fairly toothless paper is holding on to everything. 
Now no. with the uh, pastels, uh, it, let's say you're trying to create something and you want it to have a little bit more light in it. So if I have blue, I'm trying to stick because I'm going to talk a little bit about the color wheel. I'm sticking with analogous colors for now. And analogous colors means that are, they are colors that are next to one another on the color wheel because they are automatically um, harmonious with one another. So I'm really using this end right here. I'm using blues, blue greens and greens. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. throw in a little bit of a, a, a yellow green in here so that I'm keeping with my little plan. And I'm gonna go lighter because again, we wanna go from dark to light. And you can break that rule as long as you know what you're doing with it. Okay, so what happens? Again, I'm doing a lot of cross hatching here so that you can see the way this side over here, besides the paper showing through and the light colors, I'm getting an area over here that's distinctly lighter because one, I've used this on top, this light color, but also I've left a lot of the light paper showing through but I can still come over here. I'm gonna use very light pressure. Let's see what happens. Very faint. I can hardly see that. Okay, but I'm gonna use heavy pressure now. Okay, real firm, soft, hardly see it. I can see it here. I doubt you can see it on the camera, firm. So if I use a firm stroke, I can get in there and I can create some sort of textural if you want to look at somebody who uses a uh, very linear mark making, um, uh, Jay-Z, his last name is Z-U, uh, and his work is full of texture. He does oil also, but if you look especially at his uh, portraits of people, absolutely gorgeous, layers upon layers. So I've already got four layers on here, and I have no problem at all with dust. Uh, and you're, if you're in my class, you hear me talk about dust a lot because I just don't want people breathing it in. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Now, this is hard on hard. So what happens if I decide that I want to do um, uh, soft over the hard? Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm going to come in and use about the same colors. So I'm going to put this down. Here. Whoops, whoops, sorry, wrong one. Come in here. Take a nice, another nice patch here. And then say, okay, I like those marks. It's very linearly, linear, linearly. <laughs> a lot of marks. If you're somebody who likes things to be um, very textural, a lot of those layers of hard pastel will give you a lot of texture. It's really uh, beautiful. So now yeah. I have hard underneath. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put soft over the top. I'm gonna to try to use similar colors. This is really a Mount Vision on a, our poster, I think falls right about in the middle, something like that. So I'm gonna take this soft one and I'm gonna layer this over the top, okay? So that covers it, no problems at all. Let me lower that a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I can cover that. Let's see if I can cover it fully. Okay, so like this middle soft one, I'm getting that in there. I'm able to cover it up. You want it, to, uh, you know, either for the appearance of the painting or, you know, to cover up something that a color didn't work. You can come in and you can cover that up, no issue. I can also make it look textural by using my edge. Okay, let's. Right off the bat, let's see what happens. If I come up here and I use the side of my finger, I am getting some blending, but I can still see the marks. If I come down here and blend, okay, I wind up losing a lot of that mark. I can still see the line that I made, but what's happening is it's blending so much with that background color, I'm beginning to lose a lot of that. So right off the bat, I know I want it to feel textural. I can stick with a lot of those hard pastel, hard on hard. So that's what the hard with the soft on top. Let's try, that's uh, our light color. And I'm gonna go back. I'm not using the super soft, I'm using a regular soft. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just put this in here again, just fill that up. 
kind of come in. I'm not going to put hard over the top of that because I want to build up that texture. I can feel it already. I'm starting to lose tooth. It's getting really, this is the same one. Okay. It's dragging. I'm getting a lot of drag through here. So this is what you have to remember. I did not have a lot of drag up here at all. I could keep layering and layering. Over here, I blended. Here, I left it, left it alone so we could see the marks. But I didn't get any dragging. So what's happening is the hard pastel, when you drag it through, and let's put that, oh, oh, I put down the super soft one. I got to take that guy, move him over to the side. And I drag this guy through, okay? Right, one layer here, okay? So now the third one, that went all right. That's a nice dark one. Okay, and if I come in like this, I think cross hatching you see it the most. You can do squiggles, you can do dots. Okay, I can still see my marks pretty good. Now I'm wondering if the uh, one of the differences between these two is that's a Diane Townsend Tourage. It has got a little bit of a, a extra pumice in it, so it's a little grittier. So this one automatically with that extra grit, I'm able to get in there. I can get some nice thin lines in here. Mm -hmm. Let's try the this one here. Okay, I'm starting to lose my lines, but that's a little bit too light for you guys to be able to see. So let me get a green in here. Okay, dark. I'm starting to see dust. Starting to see a little bit of dust come down. Let's, that mm -hmm. was the super soft one. Over here, it's the regular soft one. This is really dragging. I'm pressing hard. I have to press really hard to go through this guy. So there's a you've, it's you've, it's a matter of really testing your pastels on a separate one. Diane Townsend Tourage is actually holding the pastel stroke better than the Mount Vision, and like I said, that one's got extra pumice in it. So that one, it pro, that's probably the reason. But in here, I can feel that there's like hardly any tooth. I would not be able to get in there. Let me see. I can't get okay. I can start filling. Can start filling it in, but again, I'm seeing the blue particles uh, fall down. So hard on hard, we've established that works out really well for holding your marks. Okay, hard underneath with soft on top, and then trying to add hard again. Um, this paper is not working. I'm going to show you what happens when I do it on another sheet of paper, the, the difference that is. Okay, so we have hard on hard, soft on hard. Let's see what happens when we put soft on soft. I'm just going to push that in here. Okay, so this was my middle soft. I'm going to take another middle soft. Okay, I'm going to take one that is a, a lighter blue, I think. Should have started with a little darker color. Okay, can you see that mark? No, it's a little too light. Let me just try this one. Should have started darker. Okay, here. Okay, I can get pretty nice clean marks on here. Okay, soft over soft. Let's try one with a little darker color that'll show up on here. Another soft one. Oh, look at that. That's not, that happens when your edge is not a uh, smooth evenly. So I'm just going to twirl it around. Sometimes that works out great. You know, the design that shows in there. So I'm going to fill this in. Okay, so I can take and I can fill that in and I can almost obliterate that blue that's behind it, but I can still see it slightly. The um, in absolutely using firm strokes help, but watch what ha uh, is fine, but not helps. Uh, I'm going to take and I'm just going to put this lightly. Now, the beauty of soft on soft is I now can create another color by just very lightly dragging or scumbling uh, one color over another. And this really uh, can break that rule of always putting dark first. It's knowing your colors. 
Now this blue and this red violet that I'm using right now, that really is just creating a variation of a red violet. So the colors actually go together quite well. So now what I'm gonna do is come in, I'm gonna try something, pull this down, make a little bit of it here. Uh, rub that in just a bit. Okay, soft on soft again. Super soft, okay. This is a, a Terry Ludwig or a Great American, one or the other. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get any linear design in here. Okay, I can get a really nice uh, direct line. So besides something that's a little bit more painterly, like putting strokes on, Okay, so I can drag that over so that stroke mark making has more of a painterly feel as if you're using variations on brushes. You can also get in here and you can put really nice um, linear strokes. So when you're doing it, you wanna actually be thinking besides the hard and soft is whether or not you, you want your strokes to be linear and that tends to look like the types of strokes that we do when we're drawing. Or if you want strokes that are painterly, and those are the strokes that really resemble more like the representation of a stroke that a brush would make, okay? Soft on soft, I'm gonna keep going with soft. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna go a little darker here. Now the darker is gonna cover it up. Okay, I've got a variation on the violet here. It's starting to drag. Okay, this is the third coat on this paper and it's starting to drag. Let's come down, just make a big long, okay. Light stroke, let's have, see what happens when I press harder. Okay, filling that in pretty quick. I can still see some of the blue and I'm not seeing a lot of dust come off. This one definitely feels like a great American. The color of it looks like it's a great American. That's about a, a you know, not, not the super soft. So that works out well. Bottom line of all of these is testing your surface, your paper and testing your um, pastels on it just to identify what are your hardest pastels Okay, my um, hardest one that I used up here is your new pastel. And what are your softest pastels? The one that I had up here, which I've chosen not to use again, but I'm gonna pull it out on this one, is my uh, Diane Townsend. So I'm gonna come in here and see what happens if I try layering my Diane Townsend, because she did pretty good down there. So let's see what happens here. This Diane Townsend coming straight across can totally obliterate. Look at that but I'm getting a drag. I'm definitely getting a drag. It's not a nice clean stroke. It's dragging through the other pastels. And sometimes you want that, that's not an issue. Um, you know, dragging is a technique that you can use. I've, dra I've uh, dragged one pastel over another right there to get like kind of a little modeled look uh, in the scene. And this is a work in progress, it's not finished. Oops, oh, I just broke it, there we go. Okay, the, um, is there anyone who's done anything with their pastels in terms of hard and soft that you were surprised with? Um, is there anything that you've done that you feel like you didn't think it was gonna work and it did actually work? Because it's amazing uh, when you start playing around what you can actually do with pastels. Again, it has to do with the, the paper that you're working with. Is there anything anybody wants to share? Or sure. Could... Okay, me... Linda. Well, you know what? You know me, I like to have <clears throat> bright, luscious colors. And, you know, that, that says tooth. <clears throat> but th the other thing, if you don't want to have papers with a lot of tooth, is that you need to know where you're going. You know, I yeah. love the paint where I don't know where I'm going. But if you're using soft pastels, planning ahead will make a lot of difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the uh, people that get frustrated, you, you can probably attest to this, people that get frustrated with pastel, 
it's more often the paper. That's the problem, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So th that's why I've chosen to do the first part of this on Canson. Canson's a great paper, it really is. But once you start putting too much of these soft pastels on it, what happens is, is you wind up with dragging. Now here, I was just trying to make dots, okay? I was just trying to make little dots. Oh, you can't even see it there. Make dots, okay? And what's happening up here on top of the hard pastel, this soft pastel is working out nicely. I can really see those dots well. Okay, down here, I've got a mixture of soft and hard. And where it's super soft, I'm starting to lose that. And part of that is because this soft pastel has filled the tooth. This, is not, this isn't sticking because of the tooth. Let's see what happens over here. I got one here. Okay, one layer. I'm getting a little bit of a dust showing up. This is a great American yellow. Just taking the corner right here and I'm making dots. Some of it's not even coming off. Okay, this would be very frustrating if you were trying to do it. Betsy, where does the Great American sit on the span between hard and soft? I believe they're somewhere in the, uh, not in that middle band with the Rembrandt. They're about uh, middle way on the uh, softness. So let's see, Great American. Oh, wait, no, Great American's way much more up on top. Oh, near the Schminke. Oh, and his Betsy, Diane Townsend, see, my Diane Townsend's super soft. So I'm really surprised about that, that Diane Townsend's soft is way down here because that one, that one's like butter. Betsy, do they sell that sheet? No, uh, it, it, it would just capture it. I just captured it on the, um, uh, you know, screenshot. Got it. Download it, you know, capturing it on the screenshot, sure. download it. Okay. Yeah. Thank they may sell it too, for all I know, but <laughs> maybe maybe I've just broken some sort of rule. <laughs> okay, so here we go. It is free. Uh, can you repeat that? It is free. It is free. Oh, okay. Thank you. It was so long ago I did it. Now I'm thinking, oh my God, what did I do? Did I just tell everyone <laughs> illegally take a copyright item? Okay, I'm switching. We're gonna do a similar sort of thing. Hard over hard, hard, uh, soft over hard and soft over soft. Okay, so I'm just gonna tack this up here. This is a piece of um, pastel mat, as you know, it's my favorite paper. And I got a batch that is um, of a very rough surface. So it's, um, it's not uh, suitable for a uh, typical painting, unfortunately. I've played around with it and I've done some textural things on it. I also know the capacity of it that even though I'm gonna use it as an exercise, I'm going to be able to, uh, wow, it's looking, it looks as like the color changed a little, did it? I'm just gonna get rid of this for a second. I think it looks like it, it it's little very little yellow. It, very yellow when you maybe move in front of the camera or something and very washed out right now. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I have a, yeah, let me just go like, let me try one more thing over here. Yeah, because- Is never, it a bright yellow? It is a, it is a yellowish uh, piece of paper. So I'm just going to, no, it's not. Okay, I'm going to go like this. Too blue. It's too blue. Too Oh yeah, everything is too blue. Yeah, let's move that down a little bit. Let's see if I can see. Now let's get the brightness. Yeah, I had trouble with this the other day. I have a horrible feeling that my um might be might be on its way out. I might be in the business of looking for. Yeah, let's try this. Let me knock that down. Color's not going to make as much difference as the stroke, right. unfortunately. But this is much more of a, a yellowy paper than it's actually showing on the screen. Same sort of thing. I'm going to use almost the same colors here, if I can remember which ones I use. This has far more tooth to it. Here's my hard pastel. And remember, for the purpose of this, I'm really trying to do colors that are analogous near one another on the color wheel. Gonna make, um, and that's me. Oh, I'll just make it bigger. 
okay, rather than making separate ones. So just make it. I am using an awful lot of pressure to fill this in. I'm, I'm really working hard. I'm going back and forth. Actually, I'm going to get quite a nice little pointed tip in a minute. <laughs> I'm going to come in and I'm just going to rub that a little bit to fill it in. Pass on that is not known for uh, being able to uh, blend it easily in the first stroke. I'm going to take my Mount Vision, which actually was uh, Mount Vision on that this list. Yeah, that's um, not on the top. It's at the bottom of the... That in. Okay, even though that's super soft, the paper's not letting me blend as much, so I'm going to add another layer. I'm not seeing any dust appearing at all. Nothing, uh, even though I'm putting on multi multiple layers of this and I'm blending back and forth, I'm not seeing any dust fall, okay? Mm -hmm. That's your litmus test. Seriously, you put it upright and you watch, and if that dust is falling down, you've got a pastel that's soft, or you have a paper that doesn't hold it. Uh, and you wanna know your combinations of both. So if you're uh, not familiar with your pastels, I'd take a sheet of paper that has like cans on, and then take maybe a piece of UR pastel mat, and then just compare how the pastels act on both of them. Okay, now I'm gonna do that same thing with hard over hard. And I've got that blue, only this time I'm just going to do like random. I can get in there. This is like holding it very easily, you know, the marks. Okay, super easy. That That's going on nice. I'm going to try it over here. Oh, no, I got to do that on a darker color. So you guys, I'm going to take the same dark one I used here. I'm going to use it over here. That's a beautiful color I've started to create there, though. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to come in. Uh, a lot of pressure. I'm coming down. Mm. Okay, this is it really dark, pressing dark. Okay, so that light paper there, I mean, the light paper and the light pastel that's underneath is actually keeping that from turning as dark, which totally makes sense. Let's put a dark pastel down here. Another. So that is light on top of that stuff. Fill that in. I'm going to take that same blue we had over here. And again, yeah, I can get really nice marks. Okay, all different kinds of make that. It's all holding really well. This is really a beautiful color. I'm a little enamored with that at the moment. You know, I love those happy accidents. That looks really pretty. Hard over, uh, soft, hard over hard, hard over soft. Now it's dark over light, light over dark, hard, hard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down our soft. Nice dark soft. And I'm going to take that, that blue that I had. Now I'm putting soft over soft. And I can come in. I can use big strokes, small strokes, all different types of strokes. And we're going to see what happens when I come back in with a hard. Okay, so I'm going to come across with the hard. There it is. Okay, what's happening is, is which is really fascinating, I'm actually dragging the pastel. So I can see that pastel drag. Yeah. So you get this lovely, almost like blendy look. And this is really a like a feathering technique. You can just come in. Let me put another light color. Let's try a different blue. I'm gonna put that right here. And let me just move that down slightly. Okay. I'm going to say, let's say, oh, yeah, is somebody going to say I'm, something? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's Paula. Uh, what you're doing now is, I, I don't do a lot of blending. As you know, I like the texture. But when I'm trying to do a little bit of it, the, the way I primarily do it is what you're doing now by taking a hard pastel and just kind of, now not using the tip, 
but just kind of dragging it over the whole shebang right. and it, it a lot like for skies if i don't want that much texture in a sky or something exactly and I find exactly. blends you know you get that kind of blending it, without losing that luminosity of the pastel correct because what's happening is the 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 little bit of pigment that's coming off on a light drag look if i do this lightly it's it's really light okay so if i take that i'm going to do half of it and i drag it over here what happens, I can slowly start to change that light blue that's underneath it. Okay. Blur the edges. That's, yeah, and you, and you blur the edges. That, that's using the side. Okay, the other one that's feathering is when you do that same. I see how light I'm doing this? I'm doing it really light. I am not pressing hard like that. I did that to make marks here so you can see them. Now I'm doing it really softly. And I am taking that. And remember, these colors all go together. There's this is a blue when it goes with the blue violet that's behind it, and it goes with the blue that's over it. So I get a very blended look. Okay, I've softened that. And that feathering goes back and forth. I do the same thing with let's try this one right here. I can come in and I can just blend with that feathering. I love feathering uh, because you really do get a really, really interesting sort of uh, texture on your on your objects. One thing that's fun to do is I've just been taking squares and doing this is you could take an object. You could take like an apple. I think I've recommended it before, a circle, an apple, a, a glass, you know, a, you know, a, a cup, uh, you know, any sort of object and just play around with the different uh, layers that you can do between hard and soft and, you know, the pressure, how light I'm applying it or how heavy. And if we took the side and we went fairly heavy back and forth, we could get that pretty darn dark. So let's see what happens if we do it. This is soft. I'm going to do this with a, oops, if I do it with a dark, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to go take, I'm going to take a light, uh, one of that light blues, the same one here. And if I go back and forth on this, I'm doing it very lightly, okay? Now I'm doing it even lighter and I'm really dragging this so that soft over soft, this is the soft over soft one, okay? I get really a lovely texture. Mm -hmm. um, and now I wanna say, oh geez, you know, I really didn't wanna lose that line. I want that line to show up a little bit more. Come in with your hard pastel because this is not going to add any more pastel. It's gonna move the pastel that's around I can just come in and I can just go back and forth and I can just move the pastel that's underneath by adding a little bit of this. And this is how light I'm doing it. Okay. So I get that edge back up again so that it's visible rather than, you know, coming in with a soft. And this paper here, I could probably get, um, I could probably get a good eight layers of soft on soft. So you can get a lot. I'm stopping at around three or four, but uh, let's take, let's take, go back to that yellow that I had that I was making dots. Let's see how it works. This is just a regular old soft. I guess it's a Terry Ludwig. Okay. We know it's going to work over here because this is hard on hard. This is how hard I'm pressing. You can't see it on that. It's not even bothering. Okay. Over here, this is soft. Soft mm. with heart, not going to do it. I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to do this one right here. I'm going to put another layer on here. Okay. Not see, it's not coming out quite as yellowy. All right. It's see the intensity up here. Two things are happening. One, it's on a darker color. Here, it's a lighter color. Here, it's a hard pastel, so very little pigments coming up. Here, it's two coats of a soft pastel. So we've got, we've got, uh, pigment right underneath it, soft particles. Let's try this here where it's dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that. I can get it nice and dark. Okay. So it's a, your value, you know, less obvious there, more obvious there. It's a light on dark. It's the same pressure of stroke that's happened here. Could be the uh, tooth of the paper. It could be the, uh, the value. So that's where you want to practice around, playing around with it. Hard on hard, and we have, that's the hard on hard. I'm getting kind of goofed up with what I've done since I keep jumping all over the place. 
let's say we want a little do a little blending and put a little so that soft in here. Okay, and then same sort of thing. You say, oh, but I want that to blend. I'm going to take this green right here, hard pastel. I'm going to come in. Now I've already got soft, hard, soft, and I can take and I can blend that right away using that like a blend. Look at that. That's how soft I'm doing this. Real light stroke. Okay, let's see what happens when I put it down here next to the violet. <clears throat> Color-wise, the violet, notice what's happening? It's getting a little bit more of a duller look down here. <coughs> so that's why it helps to have your color wheel so that you know what's going to happen mm. when you put certain colors together. Uh, this is your more traditional one. I've shown this in um, open studios and classes before. This is the gardener's color wheel. One side is your tints, which are uh, colors with light. And the other side is your shades, colors that have dark in them. And then That's here is the analogous color wheel. And this one is a really interesting color wheel to, to use. Uh, if you haven't seen one before, it's really based on your analogous colors and the Munsell color wheel, which is a little different than your more traditional triadic uh, color wheel. Mm -hmm. And if the majority of your colors fall in these adjacent hues, your analogous hues, these are the colors that you would use to create some contrast or discord, as they say. So that's worth uh, checking out sometime. Let's see, it's Sandy. Um, I'm new to your group. Um, have you ever done a demo with, you know, specifically kind of leading you through the process with the soft and hard? Because this is kind of all new to me, all these marks. I don't usually do this kind of mark making. So I love it. I mean, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, you know, and the, 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 uh, that's the beauty of pastel is you can go to a pastel show and you can see umpteen different ways that people have uh, approached creating a painting yeah. just by their mark making not even counting color and everything else that goes into it. But, uh, you know, it, as Paula was saying, she likes texture. So she keeps her texture showing. Other people do like to blend. I typically, I have not taken people through doing beginner classes. I will often do that. But, um, okay. you know, that's actually not a bad idea for a future uh, pop-up is to do something that relates to the, uh, use of strokes, which is yeah. why I have this one over here. I would love that. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to turn slightly and move this up. And I apologize for this. This is the second time I've had this issue with uh, my color not working. So I am just going, it looks a little dull on my end. Does it look dull on your end? The painting that's over here? A little, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. It's certainly duller than it was painting. when we first saw it. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, geez. You know what? I, yeah. But I'm wondering, does it look a little better now? Not, yeah. I, well, it is slightly, it is slightly duller on my screen. And I know you can't necessarily go by laptop screens because, you know, they vary. I'm just going to move the intensity up just a little bit here because it does have a little bit. Now, the I'm in a little bit of doing snowy scenes at the moment. So what I wanted to show, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, was, and like I said, this is a work in progress, is that I've got a variety of strokes that are in here. Now, I like a lot of strokes, okay? But I have to... Um, do that realizing that if the whole thing was strokey it would drive me crazy and i have seen people that do like lots of strokes and they've managed it really well i like having restful spots so um up in here i have this lovely uh, light that's coming through so what i wanted to do was come in with a, a nice yellow and just take let me just grab it right here mm -hmm use this that you know that scumbling that I was showing you mm -hmm. that the scumbling that when I take and I feather 
Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a lot of soft pastel. There's hard pastel underneath. There's soft pastel on top, but I've got too much of this orange. So I'm just going to come in with this yellow. And by using this kind of mark, just like this, okay, you can see it on there. I'm just got to wipe that off so that color doesn't go on my um, pastel. I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to wisp that up so that I've got this pick up that little bit of yellow that's on this side. Now I could have come in with a hard pastel and I could have dragged that over it and had something that was more distinct, but I wanted it to feel very feathery and light. So by using this kind of a stroke where it's very, very light and I'm coming back and forth and just going in over it, I wind up matching the feel of my stroke for the lightness. And I'm going to just add a little bit there. So I'm just doing this super, super light. And I can see on my end the way there's like a little bit of a drag that is happening in the clouds. So I have this is a that's really more the farther but they go back, the more they start to mm -hmm. just a little bit right here, the more they start to horizontal out just a little bit right back in there. I really wanted that to pick up on here. I'm going to use the same uh, yellow and that same mm -hmm. sort of idea. Yes, question? Okay. With that same one. But what's happening here is I feel like it's dulling it. Okay. So what, what I would do, so I'm not getting that lovely stroke up here that I'm getting here. So this is where I would come in and let's, I'm just going to touch, make sure that that's clean. And I'm going to put this right down next to it. Those are pretty close. Okay. This is super soft. Okay. So rather than doing a stroke, I'm just doing a little mark. Okay, so a little touch of a mark that's I'm going to just little small marks in there. So both ways I wind up with texture and, you know, it, through trial and error. Okay, the hard pastel feathered well up here, down here it did not. It is very possible down here I had more hard pastel and I was just running out of any sort of texture, just bring that up. But that yellow, now that yellow stands right out there. Just gonna put a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. So same color, two different, um, two different hardness, very firm, very hard, very soft. Okay, so I can take and I can just continue. And if I, I mean, certainly if I wanted to give more of an edge up here, Let's say on the bottom part of this cloud, I could just take and do a very light sweep, a very light sweep. Mm. Okay, so it just depends what you what you're looking for. I was looking for a lot of sweeping feathering, so this is why I knew this was going to work. Guess what? I put that down. And I say, "Whoops, made a mistake." I can just come back in and I can feather that right out. And I can smooth that again. But again, I'm using this super, super uh, lightly. So there's no pressure involved. And the same thing would happen when I come down in this area here. This was a, a bank and there was a snow. Now this is a very yellowy um, color. It's a very, very light yellow. And I don't want the area in the front to start feeling too light because it's actually that part doesn't have the sun. So what I have is I've got the cool blue, the same one that I had right here. I'm just going to take and I'm just going to put a couple of little sideways marks, drag it in there. Now it feels like there's a little bit of snow that's falling on the edge of that rocky area. And that's a super light, again, super light it's not even showing up. But look at how dark that color is. It doesn't look as dark over there. Here it's on yellow, there it's on that brown. And I would start playing around. Okay, so see, I wasn't going to do all this, but now I'm thinking, oh, geez, this would look good over there. 
And look at I didn't clean it off. Now I got that color on it. <laughs> oh well. That happens. Just get out your brush. Brushes left, and I'm just gonna lick that dark blue that got on there, and that'll come right off. So Betsy, it's yeah. large. Um I this is great, and I I love that feathering idea. But mm -hmm. it seems to me that then when you're painting, the general guideline would be to put on hard pastels first if you're going to use them and move towards softer ones. Correct. Correct. Uh, that is typically the way it's taught, hard to soft. Um, you know, uh, and various reasons, as I've explained, you know, the type of the truth of the paper, and then also there's less particles that you're leaving behind with a hard pastel. It's not going to fill the truth in. Also, so what, it's what, sorry. I, yep. I'm sorry, but the follow up question is what kind of stumps me is if there are kind of small details that I want to put in later. It feels intuitively like it would be easier to do that with harder pastels, but it will be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, if you're trying to get in if detail. They don't, if they don't go on so well, I mean that's kind of what I've had trouble with. Okay. Um, maybe I've just oh, filled up the tooth too much you've, where you've I have probably those details. Filled the tooth, yeah, you probably filled the tooth up. And then always do a double check. So here, let's let's say this is all soft pastel over here. So I'm just going to move this one back down. I'm going to come back out again. Um, okay, and let's turn this around. Get this straight again. Ooh, look at the cockeyed. There we go. Okay, this is all soft pastel over here. Okay. Yeah. I didn't try to avoid putting any hard pastel on this one. The only place I did was right there when I feathered. Everything else on here is hard. So let's get another layer on here. Let's kind of like just just for fun. Let's just get this orange in here. Look at how nicely that orange just Ooh. covers that up. Wow. Doesn't that cover that up lovely? soft you know you, it's not going to happen beautiful with pastel. see it's so mm. much pigments coming off because it's soft this all makes sense you know so the pigment comes off mm. so you cover up an area really well so let's get this really really orange here okay now let's say you're trying to put a uh, detail in this little section right here okay so i'm going to use this is a rembrandt okay Remember I said about Rembrandt, they, they're called a soft pastel, but in the continuum, they're really a medium to hard pastel. Okay, let's see if I can get some lines on here. I can easily, I'm pressing hard, I'm pressing about that hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm probably mm -hmm. pressing hard. So I am able to get details on with that one. Let's come over here and let's, and I come right in with the hard, go right across, that's working. Now I'm going to come in with a, a lighter color. Mm, which one's going to show up? I think I will use, I'll go back to the blue again. Okay. Mm. okay. Mm. So I'm going to come in and let's say, and I think the cross, okay, look at that. Look at, you can hardly see that. It's dragging through. So that, that works out probably really nice for feathering up here. Look at how nicely it's dragging the purple and the blue together. It's great for, for dragging. But mm -hmm. right here, it's not. So we try that color. So we say, okay, that's coming off super light. I'm going to just come in with a darker color. Even though I don't want it that dark, it's probably going to work because, yeah, look at that. The lines are showing up. Value issue two, not coming out as dark here but I am able to get lines in. So that's wow. oh, that's like what? One, two, that's two layers of uh, soft pastel, layer of hard. There's, there's one, two, let's put another extra one. Let's drag this guy up here. Now we've got three layers of pastel. I can drag right through it. 
these are these these guys are great. These um, hard pastels, you know, they can go right in. You could use pastel pencils to uh, truthfully, I think um, your uh, your new pastel works great. I don't think you really need hard pastels. Uh, yeah. A lot of times the actual pastel itself is just too soft. So you wind up with um, you, you don't wind up with as nice of a mark. So if you're having difficulty, test it on the side. Look at how dark it looks here. It does not look as dark over here. Okay, and I am pressing hard, so it wouldn't stand out as much. So test on the side to see which color is going to uh, layer up on top of your uh, soft pastels. Did, did, did that help, March? Did that make yep. sense? Yeah, that, okay. that, that value thing is really interesting. It and is. It is. I, wouldn't, I, mean, I the, wouldn't have thought of that as making a difference here. Yeah, so you, you want um, this color. Yeah. Okay, it's not showing up. You just need to come up with something else. And I mean, I don't have, you know, that aqua in a darker color, but just a different blue that's over there. Yeah. So give that a try. Again, a hard, you can get a lot of this, this paper here or a lot of the sanded papers, you'd be able to get a lot of uh, hard pastels. It's going to take a lot to fill the tooth in with a hard pastel, which is why a lot of people do washes. So they'll put the hard pastel down, you know, pretend I hadn't put all those marks on there, and then they wash it with uh, a little uh, alcohol on a brush or water on a brush. It kind of turns to paint and it stains it. So you've got that undercolor, but the actual pastel without uh, a liquid add to it, it does take a while to fill in a dark area. But you notice how quickly this one, I mean, this didn't take as long to fill in as, as that did there. I can just move all that pigment around. Thanks, that's great. Good. Any, any questions? Okay, I have a question and it's okay. sort of indirect. When you're talking about the spray for the background, um, what's the difference between using an alcohol spray and a water spray in terms of the overall effect or um, being able to use pastels over the top of it once you've done that? Yeah, uh, uh, good question. Uh, partly it's going to depend on the type of paper you're using, um, whether uh, in how water reacts to the paper and how alcohol reacts, because you do wind up with a slightly different appearance. So for instance, um, uh, sometimes I have found that water kind of leaves a, a grainier look. And like I said, I do a lot on uh, pastel uh, matte, slight grainier look to it. Whereas the alcohol, it is a cleaner uh, look when it dries, a smoother look as opposed to grainy. Um, alcohol dries quicker. And I'm all about doing things as <laughs> as time efficient. <laughs> you wouldn't know it, but yeah, I try to be a little time efficient. So I and I do it, you know, when I'm out plein air painting. So I prefer the alcohol, um, but I do think there is a difference. But try it on scraps of paper first. I always leave, uh, you know, save my little ends, you know, and I try the try it on that there first because I do notice a difference. And it's also going to make a difference whether you're using a soft pastel or a hard pastel and whether you add alcohol to it. Because I could do the same thing with this. I could do alcohol on this. Have you done that on the painting you've got on, on the easel here? No, this one was all dry. Uh, I was, mm. uh, was doing it for a beginner workshop. And this was, um, we did a dry blend. So we used the uh, got the base colors down, and then we used, look at all the, this is why I don't like blending, look at all the dust that's coming off here. Just use a piece of pipe foam insulation to fill it in, so you had your underpainting done. Yeah, and see this, Stephen, I have to press a lot harder just to get the hard pastel. So this was hard pastel underneath. Uh, blending it with uh, that. So, but I here, this is a little spray bottle. I use both a spray bottle. Let me double check that it is alcohol. Yeah, it smells like alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you can spray it. Okay. 
You can also say, you can also come in here and you know, use a flat, you tend to use a fan or a flat brush. You would, uh, I, I really would only advise doing it on the first layer, but I also like it when people experiment. So this has got, I can come through and all that, that beautiful color that I like. The charm is gone now. I've merged it <laughs> all. I know. I love that combination. It's so subtle. I, I know the camera's not going to pick it up. Let's try it over yeah. here. On the, and this is with a brush. This paper can handle it. Canson could handle the spray. Canson can't handle this. But see what's happening to this? My strokes. Look at my strokes are showing. Look at light drag over. Let me come down. You can see the strokes through there. Over here. That's hard on hard, uh, soft on hard. Let's see what happens. The hard strokes are there. So this technically frees up more of the tooth for the next layer. Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, definitely. The thing of it is, is if you, let's say if I take and I'm doing a painting and I put down two layers and I pull this over it, the two hards, I still wind up with it showing. This one, that beautiful color interaction's gone. It's gone because I just merged it with alcohol. Okay, so I, the color might be there when it dries. It always dries a little darker. And then this is on a yellow, not on white. So that's inter interacting with uh, the alcohol that I just wiped over it. But yeah, see, I like looking at those colors, the way that they're dancing together. Now I just kind of mushed them together with the alcohol. See what happens down here. Hard on hard, hard on soft, soft on soft. Okay, so it looks like, okay, I can keep my stroke showing. Showing. Let's see if I want to get rid of them. Oh, let's see. Watch this. See what the lines I have here? Now I'm really painting. I'm pushing these together. I now have created a whole new color. So if you just drag it lightly over the top, you can keep it. Let's see if, we'll, if we can do it here. No, too many layers. That's turning into a oh, mess. So cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother over here. This is a combination of hard and soft. So the point was to see how well we could see our strokes if we did it on two layers. Okay, hard on hard, we can see our strokes and we did have light over dark. We had light over light, it merged. I, I can't even see my strokes hardly at all. The dark on top of the light worked. Notice how much Notice how much that notice how much darker it is as it's drying. And then here I can see my marks, but the violet started to merge with the yellow. So it's lost that lovely. Look at that lovely intensity here. We've lost it. So again, and look at and I made a nice bit of mud right there. <laughs> so if well, you're going to use alcohol with your uh, pastel, what you want to do is you want to make sure that's what happened. I didn't like the shadow on it. Um, it just test it on the side to make sure that one, the color isn't going to show through like it does here and even there. And um, I don't, I mean, if you're going to add it later on, what's going to happen is whatever colors you have, they're all going to merge together. And then it's going to be a total change to what uh, the painting looked like when it was a dry pastel. It's a great way of starting a pastel, putting the uh, alcohol wash over it. Well, even that, look at the way it's turning into, you can see, and this is why I used this paper today because it's, it was a bad batch and instead of being smooth, it has like this little knobbly feel to it, which is uh, kind of odd for pastel mat. It's usually smooth. Okay, so everybody can go play with your pastels. <laughs> Get a couple of sheets of paper, one that has more tooth than the other. You know, cans on. This is pastel mat. You could do this on UART, uh, Color Fix. You could do it on any papers. The only one that does, if you wanted to try the alcohol, the only one that is really very fussy about alcohol is Sennelier. La carte. That one, if you brush it, you're, uh, and they may have changed the formula, but at one point, I hardly used that paper, uh, the alcohol dissolved 
whatever was uh, uh, a fix was holding the tooth to the paper. So you wound up with a flat card. It just came right off. Uh, pastel mm -hmm. mat doesn't like being touched when it's wet, but it's fine. It'll, as long as you don't fiddle around and touch it when it's wet, it'll work out uh, all right. So look at this one here is drying a little bit closer. This one's still nowhere near the color it was when we started. We can see where I added the alcohol. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, you know, with, with your, very much with your uh, pastels that you have here between doing it on there's the two different ones, same colors. And we had our uh, hard pastels uh, and soft pastels, and we used them on Canson uh, my chance, and we used it on pastel mat. Mm. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm trying to think if there's any. I think that was it. And yeah, and make sure you, you know, it's all about pressure. I'm going to go back. It's all about pressure of your stroke, what colors you're working on, um, whether or not you're using a hard or a soft pastel. There we go. And here, I'll turn the light. I keep turning the light on and off. I think that's probably why we had trouble because I, I didn't like the shadow the way it was falling on. Um, oh, let's see, yeah, look at there. Okay. Right. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, uh, thank you, we'll thank, you. thank you, Betsy, Betsy. Thank yeah. you. Okay, yeah. thank great. You, Betsy. Thanks for coming. It really helped me. Bye-bye. Thank you very Thanks much. So okay, much. Good. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.